use their right hand, they would say yes. Left hand, no, don't know. So but what we're trying to ask our citizens is, what are you thinking is important to you? What services do you value? And if there's an opportunity to share, whether it's with the t a village or another community, we'd like to hear it. And if at all possible, put the town of Essex, whether it's 36 square miles with a village inside of it, that's still part of the town, or 31 square miles with an independent city next to it, in the best possible place it could be for when the state makes a decision. That's our goal. Okay, so Betsy, how is this sitting with you now? Because I'm prepared now to try to figure out how I can take some of what you're paying attention to and make sure that it's quantified here in some way. Given all of that context, what are you still holding as something you're paying attention to? Well, I, I don't, I think that we are trying to make, I understand you're trying to take it and make the, the question that the village has, that they pay twice and they don't want to pay twice and take that out of the issue. The issue of whether they should separate or not. Sorry. That's what it feels like. By okay. doing this, you are making that tax equality that is one of their major focuses and trying to obliterate it. And it wouldn't be because they are paying more. We, they actually pay quite a lot for what they do. What okay. they but they also are getting the services from the town. Yeah. That they complain they're not. There's only probably about 5% of it. They don't actually of the money that they send it, they are not getting the service. Yeah, so Betsy. And okay. so that feels like to me that you are not you person. No, it's not that, that the staff is saying let's let's level it and make it so that they are they they don't have that tax on the police and they don't have that tax on the rolling stock. They don't have the tax that would cover the fire department. They, and that would make it more palatable to them because they're not paying into that. Okay. And they're just doing their own thing. And so that's where I'm thinking, it's like they're trying to make that issue go away. Okay, yep. So I'm gonna, in part because I'm filling up the two information, I won't be able to allow to catch that. But also because when I try to figure out how to work with it, um, I think what I'm hearing you say, it's frustrating, particularly in this interim time, because there's a direction that if you knew that that separation was gonna happen, some of those decisions that made during this interim time might be different, because the town would know who's interested and who are they paying attention to and responsible for. But what's tricky right now is until that decision is passed and made by the Vermont legislature, I'm assuming that's correct, the town is still responsible for all residents, village and town, and so that tax equity as it's called, although I know that's kind of a problematic frame, is still very much in the discussion. So how can I, in a phrase or two, and this might be tricky, it might be too tall an ask, in a phrase or two, note what you're paying attention to during this interim. I think that's the bind that you've raised up, and I'm, I'm not quite sure, it's not an easy bind. I'm not sure how to phrase it. Can I come back to you then in a bit? Pardon? Right, that, that, why are we merging? when we want to study. Yeah. Um, I'm going to put that down as one of these questions here, then down at the bottom. Why are we merging a share, continuing to plan for shared services if the ultimate goal is separation? Is that it? Okay. <coughs> um, sorry. Now that I'm scattered, my typing is going to come out all funny. Sorry. Those <laughs> of you who are online. Why are we? So, planning on, I'm going to say merging shared services during this interim phase. I guess I would think that by doing this, are we kind of making it so that the village thinks about why should we bother merging? 
I mean, separate. Yep. So I'm going to I'm going to handle that one too for just a minute. I think probably some people might. Some people might, right? And so I think part of what your concern is just what I'll add this. You know, what signal is this sending? Because it could be interpreted in many different ways. That's great. That's great. Thank and you. it's a reflection point rather than it's asking people to be mindful of it. I also recognize that is a almost an impossible question to, for anyone to answer. It's a really tricky position that residents and elected officials and staff are all in right now in this lim in this limbo. It's really tricky. Okay, so I'm going to actually go to open comment because okay. I think we sort of started there anyway. And then as you have clarifications for staff about any of the things that Greg presented or other pieces that come up, let's just roll that into the discussion. Folks who are online, is it really difficult for you to hear the people in the audience? I'm guessing it is. If we could just monitor that, Greg, because we might have to get people closer to the, the microphone. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you've attended one of the, here's how I'm going to suggest that we start in taking comments. If you've attended and spoken at one of the fire forums on the 4th or the 6th, I'm going to ask you just to hold your comment for now in order to give some room for folks who haven't attended any of the forums yet, or both online and in person. And it's sort of an honor system because I don't have a memory of all the different people who have spoken. Um, can't guarantee that everyone will have a chance to speak, but of course that's our goal. And um, I, you may find that I inter interrupt every now and then to make sure, just like with Betsy, that I understand what you're trying to get me to, to catch. And interrupting is one of the tools I have to figure out if I'm on the same track, because I do fill up with information. You have much more literacy in these topics than I do. If you are calling just on the phone, I don't know if this is relevant or not, I believe you've got the star five if you want to raise your hand and you're just calling in, but we'll see. Let's go to an online comment and see how the audio is working there, and then we'll come back and take comments in the room. We'll just toggle back and forth that way. So, Sue Hale, if you hadn't gotten a chance to speak on the 4th or the 6th, do you have something you'd like to add now? Yes. Hi, can you hear me? We can hear you great. That's wonderful. Thanks. Um, my name is Sue Hale, and I've lived in the village and the town of Essex on and off for 37 years. So in this interim phase, I am going to be looking at communication. I expect my select board representatives to inform the public, communicate with the trustees in a timely manner, and negotiate in good faith. You can tell I'm reading this. <laughs> I will be. I'll be looking. Go ahead. Well, so I'm going to just. Some of these themes have come up also, and I'm wondering if are you talking about when you say negotiate good faith? What does that mean? When they're trying to figure out who's going to do what and when. <laughs> um, if we're going to share services, it, what is the village going to get and give, and what is the town going to get and give? During the um, joint separation. Right, just right, because we don't know what's going to happen in the end. This is something that I just, it's the good faith part that really is important to me. And I think that they are. Um, but I think it's also worth talking about. <laughs> so I'm going to be How looking for them. Yeah, go ahead. How would you know? How do you know well, if negotiating in good faith or not? I have been attending and watching the select board and the trustee meetings for about a year now, and yep. I can see that. I can see it. I can see yeah, the difference. Yeah, we'll take care of that in a minute, Sue. So you can Thanks. see it from just sort of watching the tenor of the exchanges and the, trans the amount of transparency or input that public is getting from what people are considering? Exactly, because by going to these types of public forums, we can understand what people want. And, I, you know, part of being a citizen, I think, is being a little bit of a police dog about this stuff and this raising stuff. your hand raising when... Your hand when Right, waving your hands when it doesn't feel like it's quite right or something's off. Exactly. Okay, did you have more comment? I did. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to be looking for the select board to be proactive in their communications with us and to look for creative ways to inform town residents, 
especially those of us who don't want to get their information from social media, to inform town residents what's going on at each step in very plain, simple language. Um, people want to know what's going on with this process and they want to know the facts, but they'll settle for their neighbor's five minute understanding of the facts, which as we know is usually just a giant game of telephone. You never know what you're going to get in the end. So I encourage the select board to advertise, uh, make signs, make videos, make <laughs> do whatever is needed with drawings and little stick figures if necessary. Um, maybe a page of the website that debunks some of the myth that um, like the Essex players getting kicked out, which didn't happen, that, you know, that the trustees are being demanding of the select board. Those things didn't happen. I saw those meetings and that's just not what happened. Um, but it's, it's much more complicated on the websites to find out what the real story was. So a little bit of myth debunking, I think would go a long way in, um, in helping to pave the way for clear communication. Okay. You know, just an observation from some of the forms that came before and what you've just noted about, it's hard to know how things go down. So what you're looking for are sort of the facts, but also just recognizing that as people interpret those facts and inter interpret exchanges in different ways, uh, that those spins are, that's part of the conversation and that's part of the exchange that everyone is having with each other. And that's absolutely true. And I think that, I mean, unfortunately, people are much more liable to trust what the guy down the street says than what actually happened. And they're not going to sit and listen to all these meetings. And they're, I mean, it's, I love this kind of stuff. And I sometimes find it very difficult to slog through those meetings as, as the, the committee members do. I just, um, I just, I'm looking for sort of a clearinghouse. If I have a question on, topic A. Where can I find topic A and maybe come across topic B at the same time? You're looking for an anchor so that as inferences start to fly, there's a place that someone could go and just get the basic facts. Okay. Yes, exactly. Yep. Did you have okay. other comments? That is it. Thanks, Sue. Thank you. Let's see what, how the audio is here in line. Does anybody here in the public have a comment they'd like to share? If you haven't, yes, come on. Sure, I think what we're going to do, I don't think it's just come forward a little bit further and then try to project your voice and let's try to hear. Okay, so, if I said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> probably for, for this thing, if you want to take off your mask for it. Can I? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then let's see how it hears. Okay. We're six feet away. Yes, we are. How's that? How is that for folks online? Can you hear? I'm sorry, your name? My name is Megan Humphreys. Can you hear Megan? We're going to assume yes unless we see something in the chat. Go okay. ahead. All right. So um, first, thank you to the town and to you, Jen, for doing this and for um, hearing out concerns of what has been a very long and very emotionally charged time for our community. So thank you. Um, my name is Megan Humphreys. I live in the town outside the village. I have three kids, um, a nine-year-old Mason, who goes to uh, Essex, uh, or sorry, Founders Memorial, it's not an Essex middle yet, um, and two seven-year-old twins uh, who attend um, Essex Elementary. And we've lived here for six years. We moved from Westford, um, where my husband had lived before we got married. And choosing Essex was a big deal for us when we we're deciding to move closer to a town from Western with little kids. Um, and some of my concerns and things I'm watching for are directly related to why we picked Essex to begin with. Um, I also work remotely from home. I'm in healthcare communications and marketing. Um, I worked for a time at the UVM Health Network as well. Um, and so I come at this from a communications perspective and want to both voice my concern, um, but also listen to others 
who um, I believe people are coming from a well-intentioned place. Um, I think it is all served better. We are all served better when we try to do that. So I have not been a part of this debate for a very long. I have always voted, um, but I've always sort of trusted that what was right for the town would end up in the end. Um, I, uh, you know, don't have, I have seen the emotion surrounding the debate and people feel very passionately on both sides. Um, I believe that um, being one strong community and continuing to be one strong community will serve Essex better in the end. And I'll talk about my concerns related to that as well. So, so I'm gonna just catch it so far. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of like the meta picture first, right? Yes. Which is, I care about this town. I'm watching how the discourse happens and hoping right. that it doesn't get so divisive that it no longer feels like a well, welcoming good place to be. Yes, um, and I fear we've already, and we've we've already arrived at that place. So pulling back from that place or forging a path so you're trying to figure out how does this continue to happen from here forward because every exchange is changeable mm -hmm. and how do you start to steer it back towards a place where you can meet each other exactly. i'm going to make a note there and i'll keep listening while you great go um merger has failed several times at the voting box um i believe that is because of um misinformation lack of good communication lack of um, clear and transparent scenarios that could have been put in front of voters before the vote. Um, for example, when I watched Sarah Macy's finance descriptions, both from September and from April, she did an excellent job sort of outlining the financial picture of how we are already so intertwined yes and speculation about unwinding those uh that connectedness um has driven two halves of our community um in a really divisive way and it's it's it makes people want to run away from it <laughs> it makes people disengage it makes people not show up here when they haven't been a part of the fight for so long and um I think it turns people off. I think it's embarrassing. I listened to the government oversight committee's uh, three plus three consideration of the change in our town charter. Uh, I don't. I I was listening to their comments, and they were like, they were very confused over. Well, they want a charter change, but now they might separate. What's going on in Essex? It doesn't set our town up to be strong and to attract people, attract business, attract families for the future. Yep. It makes people either embarrassed or, or just confused, not know how to stand. Or it. just yep. disengage from the whole thing. And I don't think that serves our town okay. as a whole well in the future. Specifically, I'm concerned, Greg, you mentioned something earlier about the 42% of the tax base. I've thought a lot about this, both from Sarah's presentation, but also in listening to several um, select board meetings and trustee meetings. It seems to me that the 42%, if separation occurs, 42% pulls away from the overall town budget. That creates a massive hole. It also reduces some services, right? So you have to take the difference between some, the difference between some of that unwinding and that 42 percent we don't know having clarity around a scenario or several scenarios yeah. that would show the difference between the 42 percent and where that might be would be really helpful because it would fill in the gap where people are speculating Right. Is this just some like the fire department? Is this just a merger without merging? Is this merging without separating? What are your intentions? If there were scenario A, B, C that talked about removing the 42% of the task base, what does that mean for the town? 
what does that mean for the village under several circumstances? We could talk about that. We could debate that. We could react to that. Instead, I see um, select board chair Andy Watts saying, we don't want to scare people in the press, right? When, when asked about this exact thing, he said, well, we don't really know, and we don't know, and we don't want to scare people. And we are now in an environment where people are jumping to conclusions, <laughs> making up lies, misinformation, because they're scared. And that's understandable. Okay. So I'm, this, is, this is oversimplifying, but let's see if it catches it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's destabilizing to not know. And part of this is just not knowing. Mm -hmm. But what you're looking for is to not shy away from that, the gritty truth of not knowing, but then also what can be known or forecasted yes. about this gap. Correct. So the way I wrote it here is we'd be helpful to have scenarios or better information about the implications of removing 42% of the tax base for the town, for the village, probably amid different scenarios. That's actually a huge ask because it's a lot of work. It is an incredible amount right. of work. But and I, any information in there, what you're saying is it will help stabilize what people are wondering about. And it will help bring a framework to our thinking right now where history, pain, and emotion are now filling that vacuum. Uh -huh. Okay. So a framework to help think about it or, or sort of perhaps so people can understand the nuances of it would be correct. Even helpful. Correct. Okay. And if none of the scenarios are the right ones, We'll know that, but it's an attempt to bring that transparency and that level-headedness back to this debate okay. that isn't constantly accusatory. Yeah. Okay. Um, finish this thought. Yeah, please. So some of these notes are going to get edited a bit for brevity, but I just can't do it quite on the fly. Mm -hmm. oh. uh, but I've got here even a framework to think about. Um, even a framework might support a level of heavy discussion rather than what feels like an emotional thing. Right. Yeah. Because, you know, the fire is an option, right? That's that's an option to consider. Yet it's being cast as this behind the scenes thing that it I believe it is simply not. Okay. My second concern, as a mom of three beautiful kiddos. Um, I'm concerned about any impact that affects the delivery of child care services in Essex Rec and EJRP. Yeah. I know that that has come up in previous sessions and that has been alleviated some. I also emailed Brad Luck to learn that EJRP is tied to the school district, which is already serving the whole community and more. And that makes me yeah. feel better. Yeah. Um, the one thing, though, that I want to reinforce to you guys and the select board is um, child. Not only do I think we need to preserve the alignment with Essex Rec and EJRP, because that that alignment, they have not merged. That alignment has already saved taxpayers thousands of dollars, right? They work together, they program together, they execute separately. But it's already been very successful. As a town resident, participating in both programs, put on by both um, departments, I've seen an, an overall increase in the level of care and support and programming that my children have access to. And I'm very grateful for that. Um, I think there needs to be more of that alignment, more of that planning, um, increased child care services. Like, we shouldn't just be talking about not destroying the good thing that we have. We know that, you know, according to Let's Grow Kids, Vermont, over 50% of Vermont children do not have access to high quality child care. It affects our workforce shortage situation. It affects our businesses. It affects our tax base. It affects people who move here. So it is my concern that the select board not only find a way to make sure what has been built does not get destroyed, but also is, I would advocate for, an expansion of those services to make sure, again, for the families in our community, for the tax base, for the jobs that that provides, for the tax base that that grows, for the strength of our overall town, it is critically important that we not let, not only do not destroy it, but make it better. Yep. 
So some of these things came up with, and just in these bucket terms, so affordability, availability, and predictability. But I think what you've added is not looking just to retain what's available, but to increase it. And you connected those with the alignment of the departments. So Correct. there's a note there whether or not that can still happen if they're not aligned. I also think the connection between, you know, people often say, well, I don't have kids at home or I never had kids. So um, my concern is not childcare or I don't take part in the Essex Rec program. So I don't need them. I don't want them. Having them is inextricably linked to the overall strength and attractiveness of our town. The vibrancy, yeah. Correct. And we need workers. We need we need businesses. We need a tax base to have a town. I believe it is central to the success of our town to have this vibrant option because we want to attract people and businesses and jobs for the future. So I, I'm sorry, I'm mindful of time. Yep. I think I've got some of those. What how much I think I only have one more. I was asking, there where was are you in the lineup? Yep, yep there was three. <laughs> um, so the last concern was separation's impact on our town's readiness to meet the challenges of the next generation. Our state is facing a very difficult reality. Population shrinking, our workforce shortages, the challenges the pandemic has brought. There are bigger picture issues and forces that we have to reckon with as um, as a town yeah. to be um, have a skilled workforce, um, reduce any debt, plan for the future. We are in competition and, and Vermont has been fortunate in the pandemic in that we've attracted some population to the state because of our policies and our strength and our and our communities. Um, I believe Vermont has an opportunity and within Vermont, I fear that because of all of this and because we are constantly putting in our, ourselves in this place where it's us versus them, the Hatfields, the McCoys, divorcing parents, whatever you analogy you want to use, we are not going to be considered a great option for families to choose to move to, like we did. We were looking at Williston, we were looking at South Burlington, and we were looking at Essex. People won't want to move here. It'll, it'll, it is going to not only divide and destroy the things that are good about being here, um, I worry, um, but it also does not set Essex up well for the future. Yeah. So it's distracting on two fronts. But, you know, there's been comments about the bigger picture of all the other critical pieces there are to work on that this effort is, it feels mutually exclusive, it's taking energy away from. And I think you've also talked about just the prolonged, what that prolonged limbo does is it radiates out sort of an impression. Yes. It doesn't draw what you want to draw. Um, I believe, <laughs> I'm going to check my notes, but I believe that's it. I, you know, in, I know that this has been painful for a lot of people for a long time. It is not easy to be a public servant. Um, I grew up, my dad has been on the village board my entire life, so I understand at, down in Granville, New York. So um, I understand the position uh, that public servants are in, and um, I just, I wish for a better, more unified outcome for everybody. Let's shift to a comment online. Again, I'm going to look for folks who haven't spoken in one of the other two forums first. Is there anyone online who hasn't gotten a chance to speak yet on the 4th or the 6th and has something to say? So there's a hand raised by Patty. Patty, are you? I don't know what the last name is, though, on that. Patty, have you been able to speak at the other two forums, or do you have something to say today? I, I didn't attend the last forum. I'm sorry, I just unmuted. I, di I didn't even see the last forum. Um, I just wanted to comment on what Betsy Dunn was saying and Greg, and this last speaker was great, actually. So I just wanted to say one comment. Um, maybe this would just kind of give you a visual. Um, I've only been here six years also, and I totally respect what the last speaker said about uh, having our town attract millennials. My daughter's 28 and she wants to live in a town where 
like that speaker said, you know, this daycare and all the services. And I think because the town of Essex, I've noticed, at least in outside the town, you know, they're not just the rural areas, but the suburban area of Essex, there's a lot of empty nesters. And that's just an observation because my background is scientific data collecting and statistics. So I don't have that nice uh, human uh, background that last speaker had, which I totally admired. But public services, um, I've even spoken to some of these so-called neighbors and not just in my neighborhood that said, go ahead and raise our taxes. We really need our sidewalks plowed. It is a public health, ha it's a hazard. And I think the McCoy and whatever she gave that example, the Hatfields and McCoy syndrome is one of my clients actually said, okay, if the village has all their sidewalks plowed and you wanna be fair, don't plow anyone's sidewalks and then we'll be a unified town with no one's sidewalks plowed. That's how, I'm just trying to give an, an example of, of, of the division that I've noticed is happening since I moved here. If we had our sidewalks plowed so that the many young children can walk to school and bike to school and, and just have those services in the suburban area of town, I also feel that the rural area of town, Ethan Lawrence spoke at a meeting and just wanted a culvert fixed, and it takes for God's sake and ever. So I guess, like that last speaker said, treat others as you want to be treated so we all have the same services and then maybe the communication would be much and the dialogue would be much more open and transparent between us and if you have to raise the taxes to get a plow out here damn it raise them but we it's a i, I got a concussion the first winter living here and i'm not even i'm elderly i'm not elderly but i'm getting up there um but i'm not that old and i had to pay $3,000 for a CT scan and walking my dog right here in on Allen Martin Parkway. And how fair is that? I mean, get it together. I don't care for one town or two, but if if you want to talk about fairness, then please either don't plow the village sidewalk so all of us are fair or plow and hire someone and pay them well and increase our tax for that service so we have it during yeah. this interim period during this interim period it is out of hand i've never seen anything like it and i'm from colchester had three beetles and never had a problem getting out of my neighborhood going to my job in ophthalmology for 34 years never had an issue thank you Patty, thanks. So there, there is a lot there. I think I'm hitting on a couple fronts. One is it's been said many times, and it's in these notes about just the pain of how this discourse, when it gets really divisive, you don't want to see things just winnowed down to the bare minimum. Um, so you're always looking for ways to turn the conversation into something that's more nutritive than that. But they did add a little phrase of something that I thought that might be new around not just service availability, but how complicated is it to make adjustments and have needs be known. So it's it's not just the impact, but then how do you actually stay in communication with each other about that? Um, hopefully that's accurate. <clears throat> we just want the same services, that's all. I mean, we have 11,482 and a couple preg pregno pregnant people on the street. So we <laughs> round it up to 11,500 residents. It's <laughs> a lot. Yeah. Um, so service availability, shared services, trying to, again, I, is there anything, Patty, that I haven't captured or that it, you don't think is in these notes that you'd like me to add? Uh, public safety, I'm willing to contribute my own money for wayfinding signs for all the, the, the uh, Saxon, uh, Saxon, Hollow, uh, Saxon, Hollow, uh, Saxon Hill Road area. Uh, this morning before I ran at 7.30, it was packed with six cars and we need we need wayfinding signs. I'm, I'm actually thinking about um, applying to the Conservation Committee for Essex and I, I want to do something and contribute to this town and get those signs up. Thank you. Yeah, Patty, I'm not going to take the signs down here because it's such a specific piece. I'm, I, I don't know if this is going to be the right place to put it, but... Um... Uh, no, that's fine. But my point is I I, I enjoy contr contributing to the town. I've donated 34 pots to the Essex Experience flower pots. And if I have the money, I want to contribute somehow to make 
it better. And for all of us, I mean, Essex Junction residents go to Saxon. I mean, everybody's welcome. I love it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Patty. Just gonna look up quick and just see. Um, how about a comment in in house? Anyone who's here, uh, yes, please. Uh, good morning. My name is Matt Cohen. I appreciate you guys holding this meeting, holding the meetings you have been having, especially at multiple times. Um, this is the first time I'm able to come in person just due to work and home life. Um, some of the things that some of our other speakers have said that's really touched base out of what Megan was saying, uh, I really want their are people to be educated? And what part of that is, what does separation look like? What does that tax gaps, what do those scenarios look like? I understand that's a lot of work for a lot of people, but how are we supposed to make a vote without being educated? Mm -hmm. How are we supposed to know what is gonna come down the line if there's a separation? How are we supposed to know what's gonna come down the line if we wanna continue with merging you know, public safety systems? It, we need to be educated on that. Um, I've attended, you know, I've done the online surveys. This has been a, a long-term issue for this town for years and years and years. It seems like the separation has come up and we're not taking the time we need to actually come up with true and honest uh, evaluations of what we're going to see coming, out, coming forward. And how, as a, as a voter, am I supposed to come out to the, the polls and vote on an unknown? Yeah. So it's so complicated, and when you're trying to, when you have a question in front of you and you see you have a poll, you're right. recognizing that there are implications here that you don't really know how to imagine them. Correct. Yeah. And so I think it is on everyone's best interest to do that work, do the extra mile that we're going to need to see what are the scenarios, what is a 42% gap, what are the services that are needed and changing when that gap take, to, goes a different way, and how will that affect each person? Um, I do think part of what we have in front of us, property taxes are not optional. We have to pay them. Everyone has to pay them. The, what is optional? Option tax. We should be adding that in, raising fees for that optional. So if I don't have the money in my budget to go buy a new chainsaw, I don't have to pay that extra money, that extra tax. But I have to pay my property taxes no matter what. Yeah. Um, when we come down to our, our services and police services, the, the junction and the town outside the village use about the same amount of police services as a whole. If we are going to continue operating in the same manner, let's start with keep it the same, just keep it fair and equal, everyone pays the same amount. If we are going to be separate, let's do a study. Let's find out what was actually now needed. Do we need the same amount of officers to being handled by the town that was not including the village. I don't know. Um, but we should have more information. That's really one of the big pieces of, on my end. We should have more information before we come forward and come up with a vote of what these things are going to look like for us. Yeah, and yet those it really. So it's looking for more information on taxes, budget, and services, and, and like what the needs are. I mean, that's pretty huge. That is a itself. huge thing. And that's why the ask down, but it's just a huge ask, right? Right, and that's why I'm saying I think you actually you truly need more time yeah. to get these studies done, to get this information in, and back out to the public so we can be educated. Um, okay. When we have um, shared services and what services that we do want to be shared, they should be shared equally throughout the town junction if we are sharing them. So just like um, Patty was saying, if there's sidewalk plowing and shared budget for that's handling the junction, and it should also be handling the town and all the sidewalks in the town. Again, will that raise some taxes? Most likely. But if, or go the other way and say no one gets it. But it should be fair and equal across the entire community. And you're talking about during this interim phase. During to any out, sort of shared budget we come together and we have any shared service, that should be shared and fair and equal across the entire community. Okay. Are you saying 
Correct, correct. Whatever your your assessed value, 50-50, that we should share, if we have a shared budget on, like, the police, we don't, the police don't respond just to inside mm -hmm. the village or just to outside. They respond to wherever they need to go. We, our public service, uh, public uh, fire department, they should be responding if we're doing one whole budget for the entire, even though they're two different departments. If there's a fire at Lowe's, the junction should be, it's going to be the beat, the town, to Lowe's. It's closer. They should be dispatched first, not second. They shouldn't have to wait for the town to get there and say, we might need help here. They're going to beat them there. And they might save that building. So part of what you're saying is, um, it's so tough, isn't it? Trying to look at a list like this and figure out all the nuances. Like the thought cloud that you just presented is pretty massive. Correct. <laughs> and then I think part of, I think what you're saying is, um, you're looking for what to anticipate with, for example, how these shared services are going to be paid for. Um, but you're also talking about service availability and delivery. Correct. If we are paying as a whole community, as one community, which we are right now, we are one community. If we are paying for these services as a whole community, they should be serving the entire community. So embedded in there, is there something, how can I capture that piece? <laughs> you can probably give me a shortcut in terms of what you really want the select board to know, even in a phrase, especially if it's not here already. Um, Mainly as we look at our budgets and where we have emerged funding coming in, where we are covering a service for the entire town. Is that service being applied to everybody in the okay, town? That's what you're paying attention to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How are merged services being distributed? Okay. Yes. Great. That's helpful. Um, and you're evaluating that. Just an ongoing evaluation. Correct. And then if we become a separate entities, are those services going to still remain available to everybody? Or are we having completely separate options? Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think my last comment here is as a whole, economically, uh, economics, we do better and share the cost more as a giant community. We should all be also be voting on the shared cost together. If there's a vote being held for only and only recognizing a small section of that community and being utilized by a small section of that community, why should the whole community pay for it without Okay, I'm gonna try to translate this one too. And I'm gonna to try to translate this one goes right to the heart of the issue of Correct. town and a village embedded in it. Correct. And I think and again there's sort of these development and ex exploration of the separation happening mm -hmm. right now. So during this interim phase, are you giving some feedback around voting or around what are you looking um, at? that we there should be uh, if, if we are voting on any sort of merged or shared plan. For the interim. For the interim. It needs to be shared across and approved across the board. Okay, you're wondering how does that vote get represented? Correct. So, let me see how I can catch that. Um, I'm kind of looking at how negotiation of issues related to separation and independence takes place, but I'm also looking at representation here. We don't have to be stuck here, but I'm just going to put at the bottom. How do these things get voted on? How do interim arrangements should be voted on? How do they get? Yeah, how are they voted yes. on? Yes. Yeah. Okay, Matt. And I'd just like to thank everyone for putting your input and having your time and taking a few minutes to listen and. Um, they won't have any questions for me. <laughs> I, mean, I gave you some big, some big issues. For the audience, I can see Matt. He typed out his questions and his thoughts. That took a while. That's, that's pretty good, sir. Thank you. Let's take a comment on air. And again, I'm looking for people who weren't able to speak at either, on either the fourth or the sixth. Greg, can you cue someone up? Is it? 
Uh, Mary, did you speak? Have you spoken yet, or um, is this your first time? No, I haven't. I spoke. I spoke to you about whether I'd be able to speak at this one, but I have not spoken in any forum yet. Okay, very close. Okay, um, I just I feel like that we're kind of putting the cart before the horse here. Maybe that the one thing that's not that I don't believe has really been addressed in a way that's really helpful um, is what's happened to the two communities and how we feel about each other. There is so much nastiness, so much distrust. Um, it's just gotten to be quite, quite awful. And, and I'm not sure that throwing money at things and making things equal is going to make it better. It might even make it worse. I feel like we need to start with trying to build the community first and see where we go. Um, speaking from a personal standpoint, and I'm almost afraid to because it's been my experience now, and I'm sure the experience of others on both sides, um, where you make one comment or write one letter and immediately you get attacked back. And it gets to the point where you don't even want to speak. Um, some of us have been extremely involved in going to meetings, having our own meetings on the side to participate. What, what we were all taught in school to participate in your community. And when you do that, it seems like if you are not in agreement with what the majority wants, you're labeled a troublemaker. And I think that these forums have been okay. Jen, I think you're doing a very good job, but because of the energy around all this, we noticed, and I don't think this was done on purpose, I honestly don't, but we've noticed that for those of us that have been real active, we immediately, in not only in this forum, because it has happened in this forum, but during the select board meetings and trustee, well, I can't speak for the trustees because we don't speak up at those, um, we immediately get interrupted. Um, you know, Bruce, my husband, prepared a statement, and I don't think he got three words in before he was interrupted. And this has happened to other people that, that have been real active. And it kind of, it just feels like there's such a division that you're not even gonna be heard. And you know, what's the point? And I think that this needs to be addressed. This came out in the um, forums that were held before the merger um, with the KSV. This came out loud and clear on both sides that people are frustrated, they're unhappy with what's happened. And yet now that's being discounted. I truly believe, and I've talked to other people that voted against a merger both times, that if, if the people would have been listened to, merger would have happened. And I think that what we need to have happen is to have district representation. I think that districts really should be made across in the junction in the town so that the line, the division is gone so that people that are in the junction are now part of the town, even though they are now, um, and that people in the town might be part of the junction, but to make us a whole community. But we are not addressing the, I just want, I want to use the word hatred, but I don't know if it is, but it's just awful. There is no, there's no love here anymore. And there's yeah. just a lot of frustration. So Mary, so Mary, Mary whoops, Mary, there's, there's an echo there's again. An echo again. Landed on your side also. There's a couple different tr trends that I'm trying to pick up, and I'm wondering if I'm missing something. So I just did want to say you have you've talked about the civility of how these conversations take place, and just how disheartening it is if you stand up and try to have a conversation about it to step into criticism. Um, and you've also talked about representation. And overall, I think what you're talking about is sort of whether this is a welcoming environment to step forward and continue to explore options together as a community. Is there something that I'm missing? Well, I think there's something that I didn't say that I'd like to add, which okay. is I would like to have there be some kind of a focus on the whole idea of what does it mean to be involved uh, in your community? 
Um, you know, they uh, the select board has put out several times an invitation to please get involved, please. And then when we do, uh, you get into trouble for it. Um, I think that what we need to do, and even with these forums, to say that you're going to hear from the whole community in an hour or in an hour and a half <laughs> is kind of an insult. I mean, there's just no way. And I think that we need to start thinking outside of the box. I don't know how it can be done, but I believe that it can be done. Um, where maybe we can start having some community dinners where we can have discussions on various issues. Yeah. Um, maybe we should have things happen to try to do some community building. Being active and going, you know, being involved and in going to a select board meeting uh, to me is not really a great participation because what happens is you stand up, public to be heard. It's like talking to a wall because there's never any any conversation around. It's just like, thank you, next. And so yeah. we never get a chance. Right. So I, yeah. Right, it's not, public to be heard is not the most effective forum for an exchange. It's just sort of an information giving. Um, but what you're talking about that's new, and I'm, I don't think I'm catching this, which is how to increase options for community building and discussions. You know, forums are one thing. I know you can't hear from everyone, but hopefully it does provide a forum for some kind of exchange. And you're saying that's still not enough, that in order to have real participation, there has to be more frequency, more forgiveness, more ability to give and take. Well, community I, building, whatever that's going to be. Because I I okay. don't dislike the people in the junction. I think. I, and I hope that they don't really dislike us out here, but we've lost the community feeling. And um, I just think that's something that needs to be built up before we can even think about these other things. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Mary. So, and what? Uh, we're going to do a quick little try to switch the sound okay. so that I can get on the mic. So um, I'm going to put myself on mute, Aiden. Yes. Think it's what you need. Let's just let's just stick with what we have. Let's just stick with what we have. Yeah. Yeah, right. it's imperfect. I know. Thanks for coming. No, it's all good. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. So can yeah. I see a show of hands, both from folks who are online and folks who are in the room, before I take other comments about who has things that they want to say? First, I'm looking for folks who haven't. And I know um, there's one in the room. Whether you've spoken before or not, how many people still have comments that they wanted to share? There's two in the room. Here, three in the room. How many am I? Two. Three. So here's what you might notice more from me is to really, I'm going to be trying to, <laughs> I, and this is so ironic coming after Mary's comment about interrupting. <laughs> okay, I'm going to use that tool to try to figure out what is the heart of the matter that you want to make sure that you have here and part so that we can manage our time. We don't have to end right at 1020, but also just to make sure that more voices get into the mix as possible. So, is it Betsy? Am I remember that right? Come on up and then we'll go online and talk back and forth. Go ahead. So I'm going to add Betsy Dunn. Um, I'm a town outside the village member. And um, I'm, I'm going to add to the communication piece in that um, one of the things I had talked to Andy about and I thought was going to happen possibly was that instead of just relying on the public to be heard time frame at the meeting, if there's supposed to be something that we're asking them to consider and get back to us, potentially have, as Evan has these meetings that he has with the public, I think there should be a regular ongoing thing where two of the people from the select board, because you can't have three for sure, because then it's a meeting, um, but two people from the select board should have maybe every other week or at this time because of the uh, crunch that we're in and getting to um, the question of separation that the village is going to be answering, um, have these little meetings where people can get together um, either here or at a coffee shop or wherever, but so that people can say these are things they think should be happening. And 
outside, maybe even outside of the um, whole realm of separation or merger, just things that they want to see the town get engaged in that is not happening currently and have this sessions like that. I think that would be helpful for communication. Do you call them coffee chats? I do call yep. them coffee mm -hmm. chats. That's what you're thinking? Because I did it, go to the one I've that... even tried to expand that to beer chats. Uh, if, if the, so I, I'm not opposed to going to a place that has beverages of all kinds to show up in public because I understand not everybody's available at 9, 10, or noon. Right. Uh, so I think that's one piece. And I think that where Matt was talking about the um, uh, shared and making it equal... I understand that there, that the village has issues with the taxes, but if we're going to combine these things, then it should be 50-50. 42 is like a crazy number. It is, I don't get it. Uh, they, and the town does not use the police force as often as does the village. That's just what the um, chief had said when we went to one of his coffee chats with the cop. And, um, it, I just think it should be 50-50 if it's a shared thing because you, who knows how many times they're going to come into your town. And, and if we do separate and Colchester has got too many holes to help us, uh, to help the village have a alignment with them, with contract with them to do their services. Williston is a small um, police force. They can't do it. Sheriffs can't do it. And we're the most logical choice you instead of paying a hundred percent and going out and having to do your own um police force and have your own building 50 50 is i think an altogether reasonable price not 42 58 it's like that's crazy making so what i'm going to catch for that is how to allocate the cost of shared expenses and then i have what makes sense is it 50 50 is it other percentage what formula is fair i think so for two separate entities that's what okay. it should be okay and then when it comes to the services that Megan had spoken to, um, especially the child care. I understand the angst around that. And I think we should be asking our bigger employees, employers, mm -hmm. to offer child care on site because I think that's a huge piece and it's something that, that it's, um, something they could do for the town, having child care on site and or supportive for child care. Um, and because we all don't have kids, and I, I, right. I pay my education taxes. I don't have kids in this school. When my kids were little, there were people who were older who didn't have kids, and they were paying for it, and that's absolutely fine. And the shared piece, um, possibly, I mean, when it comes to the pool and recreation, I, my granddaughter was with me, and I took my daughter and her child to the pool. Uh, well, they don't have a pool at our pool for the kids, so we went over to the town pool, the village pool, and it was nineteen. No, it was what was it? Nineteen dollars for the three of us to use the pool for one day. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't pay nineteen dollars to go on to um, Indian Brook each time they want to go. Mm -hmm. That's a pass for the whole time. I mean, there, that's a, another little issue there. Mm -hmm. And representation. I think that we do need to have districts. I think we need. That was one of the things that we spoke to greatly way back in 2006 and then 2015 we said it again that we want to have districts and this is for the town if they separate i still want to see districts i want to have us have it so that you know your representative is your representative going into the meetings and you can go over to their house there's a, yep. a community base for it um, I think that's important, and having the information put out after the meetings that we have with our select board and have something come out in front porch forum and in an, another venue, whether it's Facebook from the select board, but this is what we discussed, this is what our answers were, and this is what we're going to do. Okay. So that people are clear what it is, and they don't have to go to a four-hour meeting. Yep. And or just go for a period of time to their little part that they are interested in. Okay, that, it is starting to build up in my head because there are okay. things here. But okay, so some of these things are noted around just in terms of cost and access to different shared places, depending on which entity you reside yep. in. Noted here for sure. 
there's lots of different things about representation, but I think what you're talking about right now is just the ease of communication and staying up to date yep. so that you don't have to sit through hours on a Saturday morning or whatever it is yep. to stay in touch. And the child care piece, I haven't added, in, added anything for that because it's just a little bit outside of. Sure. But, yeah. But it's a. But I think it's important. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Comment online. Harlan. Harlan, have you spoken before? I think we're going to. Uh, Deb, Harlan, and, Gab, and Gabrielle. Thank you. Greg, I spoke at the, uh, the very first form. Um, I had made a comment then, but I have not spoken since. Deb, have you, Deb, have you spoken before? No, I haven't, but I love listening to Harlan. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's do this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go Deb first and right. Harlan. I'll I come appreciate back. that compliment. Yep. All righty. Yeah. Okay, Deb. Okay, so Deb. I'll, I'll go brief. And I'll, um, I agree with a lot of what has been said, and I appreciate um, a lot of people stepping out and, and taking risk here. Yep. So real quickly, I want the select board to be aware that 50% of their constituents want to know what it's going to take for us to go for separation. The other 50% are going to be impacted by it. So I would ask them and encourage them to get with the timeline, work with the trustees and help us because it will benefit us all. And, and I would also like to advocate for clear, accurate and regular communication from the trustees and the um, select board. Sorry, it all goes to both of ways. It does. Um, a comment about public safety and public health. For me, that's the foundation of freedom, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So I want all of our leaders to take the approach that the best option for the greatest good is the first priority, and economy of scale second. So um, I'm down a little, down a little yeah. bit there, Ed, so I can figure out how to um, touch it. So, so yeah. your comment about clear, accurate communication from both boards, boards makes sense. Like that's in here. What you've just, what you just said public, public safety. safety and services. Yeah. Is there, is there so yeah, pub, any public safety or anything that has to do with public safety or public health, I think that that's the foundation of of our freedom, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, and that's what makes us fabulous. And so, when it comes to those types of decisions, I want the priority to be what is the best option for the greatest good. So obviously, I want to continue to support the police department, and I want the economy of scale because that makes sense. Right. Okay, so one of the things you're looking for are, I'm going to put, I'm going to put this under policing, but you're talking about services also in public health. Public health. Mm -hmm. let, me just, yes. just, let me work, let me work with this for a minute before you add more on, just because it makes sense to grab it. I don't know if it's anywhere else yet, so I'm going to put it down in questions. Might pop, Might pop up in one of those categories later. Um, um, <clears throat> I think what you're saying is you're prioritizing clarity about, about uh, uh, public safety and public health. Mm -hmm. um, um, clarity, clarity about decisions and changes that are being considered. Is that right? Is that right? Yes. And and the greatest good for the TOV and the whatever the TIV. I, that irritates me. Sorry. That's okay. Um, And otherwise, I wouldn't really want any changes in any of the finances or any of the way that they're handled until after we have the separation vote. Yeah. Changes. changes in, so what you're looking for changes in budget. You're just trying to minimize how much that changes until there's an interim over. Correct. Correct. The one time I'll support status quo. Sorry about that. No, okay. okay, so just a couple more comments. Yep, um, yep. And let's move on. Move on, Deb. Sorry. Um, um, it's less that, less that uh, I think what you're looking for is how are those costs, costs going to change during this interim time? And you're really paying attention to it. You, in particular, want to keep status quo. And I, and I also recognize this interim phase is of an undefined amount of time. So status, so status yeah. you, know, you know, that's a specific solution yeah. to something that you're watching, which is to just, to just try yeah, not. In my mind, that's two years because that's about all the patients I have left. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. Um, I'm going to put this either. I don't know if my brain is just frying out because it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> or if it's just, this is so complex and you're all looking at so many different things. It may and we've been, I've been thinking about this for two decades or least plus. So, you know, for me, this has been something that I've had plenty of time to chew on. Okay. Okay. I think you're, I think you're paying attention to and wary of. 
any big, any big budget changes during this interim time. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Okay. So just a couple of other comments from um, things that I've heard today that everything I appreciate that first of all, it is not normal to pay two property taxes and it's not normal to vote twice. And in the interim, and, and I don't like the us versus them. And I really would like in the interim, if we could all find kindness, mm. um, oh, damn, bro. I'm popular today. Um, and then finally, transparency and bias awareness from all boards. I think that there are biases. I think it's obvious if you watch the YouTube remakes of these shows, it's it's clear. Mm. I'm on the Housing Commission and I serve both the village and the town. And when I started, I told everybody that I'm in the tank for separation. Well, first I was for merger and I was willing to give up 12 years. But anyway, another story. So I just think that people should be aware of their bias and, and to pay attention to that and minimize the executive session so that we don't have to feel like we don't know what's going on. Um, I do feel like I'm divorcing myself and the misinformation, I mean, there's like a Trump-like misinformation campaign that is underlying some of this that makes me concerned. And finally, the last thing I wanna say is that I just really wanna send out gratitude and love to the staff that are at the village and the town, you guys rock. I really want you to be held harmless to all of this. I want you to be treated with fairness and equity. And I think that one of the other things that makes us great, Megan Humphreys, that the reason I came to Essex was for our outstanding school system. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank everybody for everything they do. Mm. Thanks, Deb. Thanks, Deb. That's a good yeah. shout out for different contributions that make this place strong and vibrant. Even yeah, when it's sounds good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other, Any other comments, Ken? Right? Is that right? Yes. Thanks, Jen. Ken Carlo, how are you? Uh, you keep on asking, what have I been paying attention to? I've been paying attention to the trustees, the select board, and the staff. What I'm seeing is that they're blowing it. Hmm. I support the concept of separating and sharing. I suggested it two years ago. And what I'm seeing is ignoring the voters. 80% of village voters said, prepare a separation plan and share one thing, one thing only, police. And yet, what do we see? The trustees make requests to share lots of other things. They do pay attention to one thing, however, when? They were asked to do it in November. They're doing it in November. Hell or high water. The select board. Very slow to respond. They, they're not helping the village figuring out what is it going to be like separated in a timely fashion to make that November date. Conflict there, obviously. These forums are a good example of where the select board has failed. We're always in the village. There are people outside the village that don't have great internet access that are not going to be participating. We don't really know what the position of the select board is on the separation. They've never really said, do we support it or don't we? Okay, so one of the things you're looking for is good information about as the select board takes in information and conditions are always changing, you're looking to track what is the particular position at any given time. No, I'm looking for the select board and the trustees and the staff to do what the voters ask. <laughs> again, I'm laughing because I don't know how to put this down here in a way that people will be able to-, to um, I, I'll say it again. Catch it. The trustees and the select board and the staff should be doing what the voters ask. Okay. They so, asked for a separation plan. So I'm gonna ask a different kind of question. So when you're looking to see if voters is a huge group. No, there's village voters voted. 80% said separate. Share one thing. So what, what would tell you that um, that response, you know, that these, that elected officials and staff. Are not doing that? No. Are, what would tell you that they are? Um, just meeting to figure out how to separ how to share one thing, police. Okay. So specific plans on how separation is going to move forward would give you an indication that they'd heard the voters and are responding to it. And specifically, you're looking at policing. You're not so interested that all the no, other pieces. That's what the voters asked for. Okay. It was it was a referendum. I'm gonna to try to stay with you. And finally, the staff. And how are they ignoring the voters on this separation question to share only one thing? They throw out other trial balloons to share other things. 
you've heard about it today, mm -hmm. um, how to share fire, for example. And it's really interesting to see that the staff is suggesting a budget sharing only component when they've been doing that for public works for six or seven years now with the idea that we should have a full merger, but no, we only really have a budget merger. We haven't had that completed. So when staff completes the merger of the public works, then maybe we can talk about merging some other departments, but we should get that done first. I haven't gotten it done in seven years. I think that needs to be done. Okay. So it, I, here's why I'm pausing again, because I feel completely ineffective trying to figure out how to get some of these comments I'm in sorry. a way that they're represented you, you, here. You, you can watch it later on YouTube. So this is a <laughs> series of statements that I think you're wanting the select board to hear. I actually am, am really trying to figure out, you know. This is different, I know. Yeah, it is a little different. I tried so to make me... it different. So <laughs> I value it. I just don't know how to use it here. So Ken, I'm going to do the best I can. I'm going to hang with you. I, I think the idea is, is simple. Yeah. The voters asked for a specific thing. And the select board and the trustees and the staff need to honor that. What else do you have um, that you wanted to be able to say? And then I'm going to see if I can. Final thing. This. Yeah. They need to get out of the way. They're blowing it. They need to get somebody to do these negotiations, some citizens who can actually come up with solutions. I met with a villager just the other day. And we, together, we were talking and discussing the whole separation thing. And we came up with ways to solve a number of the problems. The citizens, I think, can really do it. Three or so from village, town outside of the village, I think, could come up with a good negotiating plan, let the select board and the trustees pay attention to their day-to-day -day business, and then that group would present a plan, which, guess what, might actually be received positively. Because it came from the people who are going to live with it. That's the gist of it. So I think, you know, if there was one thing I was going to pull out of that, Ken, that I, I think, I don't know if it's on here yet or not. It's about, um, but it might be in representation, how elected officials right now are getting input from the community around different options. They got it um, last um, March with an 80% vote. Right, but and... you're not talking about the vote. You've just moved on to not, not just talk about vote, but solutions. As people come up with different pathways and solutions, how that input you know, what are the forums to get that input? Under These are very imperfect. They're not random samples. They're not the population. They're just people who want to speak. The vote is what counts. I Okay, I hear what you're saying. The forums by themselves, you're right, it, it is selective. And a vote is a measure of the, the widest kind of um, opinion that you can get or the, yes. It's authoritative. It's, it's what has to happen, right? So is there something that, um, Anything else you haven't said yet, Ken? That you no, no, I, I've, I've completed. Yeah, okay. okay. I want to keep it brief if I can. So I'm going to assume that a lot of what you've said about the input representation, um, trying to get sort of the discourse to be. I think that the trustees and the select board and the staff are ruining it. We're not going to get a good separation plan. It's going to be muddy with all kinds of things included that weren't asked for. Okay. And folks are going to say, uh, this is not what we asked for. And it's going to create problems for the village voters. Mm -hmm. Well, the yeah. town voters don't get a choice, but is it going to be a problem? It's not what was asked for. It was very clear. You should read. So, if you haven't read the question, you should read it. So I'm going to time you out there, Ken, because so, I know I've got other comments. Mm -hmm. And it's not so important that I get it as much as it is that your community understands it. But part of what you're saying is it's so tricky to manage expectations in this particular issue um, and on the scale like expectations about what a vote means or what should or shouldn't be done or what shared means. And that all of those conversations are pretty complicated to have on the public and scene. That's the problem. And, and the voters didn't ask for that. They asked for a simple thing. Now, if they don't like how it falls out, great. You learn something. Okay. What I asked for wasn't such a good idea. We vote no, we try something else. Okay. Have I honored what you came here to say? I don't know. I have to read it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very challenging thing you have to do. Okay. I, I tried to keep it simple, but stay focused on that one concept. Voters ask for something. Why is it that the trustees come forward with a 12 priority list of other things? Why is it that staff suggest, hey, let's try merging the budgets of the fire department and some other things? Okay. Here's where I'm going to put this. I'm going to ask you for a question that I'm going to write your question down here rather than trying to understand it in the categories. If you had one question, Ken, that you were asking, I think it's around 
Why is a separation issue that seems so simple getting so complicated? It shouldn't. Is that your question? It's sort of a and, and the answer is it shouldn't because the question wasn't that complicated. It was really quite simple. Prepare a separation plan. Share one thing, please. That's it. Okay. 80%. 80% of the village voters voted for that. Okay. How are those folks going to feel when they find out that... Uh, not just that we want to do this, 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 and that. Okay. It basically creates fog and I, smoke. Yeah. And you've heard all the, all the complaints you've heard are related to that in a, in a, in a way. People are saying the communication, right? Yeah. You, you're hearing that? That's what's coming out. Okay. And the select board needs to help. And it, it's, you know, they're asking to share one thing. They should focus on that one thing. This is what we propose for police. Okay. That's it. I'm going to say, please help simplify. Period. Why is a separation issue, which seems so simple, one shared service police getting so complicated? Please help simplify. I think, can I have to leave it there? Thank you so much. I don't have to go after all it turns out. My thing got canceled. Oh boy. There you go. All right. So online. So Harlan, I believe you're up. Great, thank you. Um, I'm going to try to keep this short because that was the game plan. Um, so a lot of the problems that I'm hearing is uh, transparency and trust. Um, and and one of the things that I'm kind of keeping an eye on, we've got a joint meeting coming up Monday. Um, and there's a couple of asterisks in there where those are going to move into executive session. Or it looks like they're going to move into executive session. And I... It's a little hard to be transparent and and trust our um, select board members and our trustee members if they are, and I get the fact that they can go in there because technically they're contract negotiations, yep. um, but I feel like somebody should be able to direct where we could have that conversation open um, in the public eye until maybe it gets to a point where uh there is some legal advice that would be needed and it moves in so um my concern is, is the transparency and the trust and the only way that we're going to gain that um and i'll try to give a quick example if they were talking about something that i disagreed with and then it went into executive session afterwards i would have the opportunity to send an email to either that select board or that trustee and say I need you to explain this to me because this is my thought process on what you were talking about in that particular area. Mm -hmm. So I'm a little I'm a little concerned with the amount of um, executive sessions. And uh, if Greg would love to correct me, I would I would appreciate that. Um, the asterisk is there to say that this could go into an executive session, but does not mean that it needs to go into an executive session. Um, and then which is going to make it just a little bit longer, a quick note. Um, none of this is simple, and I'm not looking to get into an argument with Ken, but just to show you how complicated this is, he believes the vote was very simple. Um, the fact that it was a non-binding resolution complicates it, mm -hmm. and there's only, only so many things that you can put on um, a vote. And the priority, we have two fire departments, we have two recreation departments, we have two libraries, we don't have two police stations. Uh, so on that non-binding resolution, um, they put the police department as the top priority because we do not have two police departments. So again, transparency and uh, the only way we're gonna trust you if there's more transparency. So the least amount of executive sessions and if the conversation goes sideways and let's jump into executive session at that point yep thanks did you have a, clear, have a clarification greg yeah those yeah those asterisks um harlan the, the, the means that there is an option to go into executive session uh, um there's some public information in the packet as the select board response to the trustees proposal so um i imagine that the two boards will discuss that public? in public uh, uh whether or not they go into executive session afterwards whether it's neither board or both boards or uh, the, board uh, the board separately i i do not know we'll see how that plays out on monday night, monday night. Um, but i do expect some of the discussion to take place in an open session it, it, and i'll add that again again, again it, is it is very hard, hard for two bodies who want the best for their citizens 
who hear something in a meeting to then discuss what they may want to do or how to counter in the meeting when they need to talk to each other as to what, as a group, they want. And that's what executive session would allow them to do so that the other side, if you want to call it the other side, doesn't hear all your thoughts and what you might want to counter with and why. And so it's just very hard to do this completely in a public open forum because it just it just is. But I, I've heard all the comments. It's just very hard. If you were doing contract negotiations with, let's say, the police, and I wasn't allowed to go talk to my lawyer about, let's say, hey, if we do this and do that, and then they hear everything that I'm saying as to what's a possibility, why would they bargain with me if they already know what I might do or not do? Yep. That's just very difficult. Yeah, so, no. so negotiating without, without the ability to caucus is nearly impossible, and it's duly noted, and it's come up through a couple forums too, oh. about how... Um, to the extent that anything can be shared and transparent about even what the topic is, then that's helpful. So I'm only going to take comments right now from folks who haven't spoken, mostly because I know there's still a couple of people waiting, and we're already over time. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody oh. still... Thank you, Harlan. Is there anybody still okay. in the... And here, who has something to say on site? It's okay. You can, if today, you can speak today. No, I'm going to go, and then I'm going to go to Gabrielle, and we'll see. Come, come on up if you. Thank you, Irene Renner. A couple of things. Uh, I'd like to reinforce what everyone has said about clear and transparent communication. And I would add it's really important to have clear and transparent policies. That is, if people want to share uh, more equally the taxation, then I would suggest that the select board use its powers to tax outside the village residents for its the outside the village library and fire department and those things that are thought to serve the town outside the village more. Of course, they serve everyone in the town. But again, if we're looking to equalize taxation, let's be clear and transparent about it. Let's not merge budgets as we did for public works in good faith. And yet here we are seven, eight years later, and the town still does not control public works as those of us who are on the select board at the time were promised it would. Let us learn from those past mistakes, not to backdoor merge anything without seeing it through. When public works is done, then we can talk about perhaps combining other things like fire, capital, and staff that may or may not be one department ever. As it was said before, let's not merge before we separate. Let's wait till the November vote passes or fails because we don't even know if separation is going to pass when it's a binding vote. When I hear staff say everyone is paying, that is, of course, a misnomer because 58% of any town tax revenue comes from the outside the village folks. So it's not equitable just because everyone is being charged for it. Please don't rush things. I like Ken's suggestion for having a group of citizens come up with their own separation plan and having the boards vet it because there's not a lot of creativity here and we need to have some creative solutions in this town. And because it has come up before, it's, it's on this list in terms okay. of representation and committee group. Great. Last fall, the village sent an incomplete merger plan to its voters and it passed. Even if the town's merger plan had passed in March, the House Government Operations Committee would have been in a bind because statute says the same merger plan has to come from both municipalities. So let's not please skirt over details and let's make sure instead of rushing to a vote this November on whatever it is that gets thrown together in the next few weeks, that we actually have more citizen involvement and we put off the vote until March when everyone inside the village and outside the village can vote on a separation plan that everyone has taken time to understand. Mm -hmm. I heard someone reference um, how important it was that the two rec departments are working together. 
They came to the select board several years ago and begged to co-locate. They told us it was for the benefit of the customers because one-stop shopping would be the cat's meow. And indeed, it's been wonderful to have one brochure and one place for people to go. And yet Brad Luck threatened at a recent trustee meeting that they would perhaps be splitting up, that perhaps the Essex rec program would have to find a new home. And that's really unfortunate because that tells me that those of us who had misgivings all along and thought it was just another backdoor merger may have been right. Please, oh please, think about the customers first. So I am going to pause you there for a minute. Um, although maybe that message isn't actually for me. I, when you think about retaining childcare and what you're paying attention to in this interim phase is noticing that signals people can signal I'm seeing veiled threats and I don't like that okay. as a, as someone who was put on the spot and told really no this isn't a backdoor merger we're just co-locating and it's really for the benefit of the citizens I want the current select board to understand there's a lot of mixed messages that get sent and they need to trust their guts because time always tells what the truth is and who's really working for the customer and who's just really working for themselves so please select board trust your gut okay so that and that also loops back to how decisions are made and how they're made with transparency absolutely and common sense is often missing here too and i think that's what the beauty of having a citizen committee form over the fall and winter Citizens don't have to worry about re-election. They don't have to worry about keeping up appearances. They can sit in a room and they can hammer out a separation plan that's purely based on common sense. And and, and I think it will. Yep. And it's mostly based in the interest of time because now we're more than 20 minutes over. Yep. But I remember talking, hearing you before and putting into these notes just that idea about, you know, where does that advisory information come from? Where are the opportunities for people mm -hmm. to discuss and then share those plans or proposals? Right. It's here. Okay. But I think what Ken was proposing was a separate group working on a separation plan, and that has not been brought up at all in any form or any meeting. See how it's framed here. Okay. So thanks. See if there's something else that, that needs to be adjusted. Um, I think it's under representation. And it's here. Mm -hmm. What options could be set up for the interim phase to increase representation to inform planning? There's an advisory committee idea that was noted. And that's not what you're suggesting. Right. I will note I will note it here. I think um, the hard thing is that I didn't really set this up to take to brainstorm a lot of different specific approaches. Mm -hmm. I'll note it. But also recognizing it's so imperfect because there might be twenty people who have different approaches that they'd want to suggest. Mm -hmm. And I didn't set up this process to gather those. So the idea would be to put off the the November vote until we have a better process that's just more thoughtful. This feels very rushed to me to so I'm try to do this in the summer. It seems appropriate in a slightly different space, which is down at the bottom. And that's about, is this time frame like where are the adjustments? What That'd be great. Yep. Is that a reasonable time frame? Um, and the interest there is in more education, more input. Mm -hmm. Education, interaction, exchange, input. Okay. Thanks so much. That it? That's it. Okay. Appreciate your time. Gabrielle, you're up. Thanks, Jen. Um, one more brief piece of feedback and then one more broad. Um, I think I understand now how uh, the public works budget um, and funding works and the idea of uh, duplicating that with the fire department. And I have real concerns about that model. Um, as a town voter, I'm, I'm really concerned that uh, the village board, if I understand this correctly, creates the public works budget for the village, and then that is delivered to the select board. And of course, as a town voter, I get to vote on that as part of my overall budget. But um, I, I don't know. It just doesn't sit right with me, and I, I don't think that's a good model to replicate for the fire department. Um, uh, so, I, I, I just don't like that whole. I, I appreciate the um, intention behind um, the public works budget arrangement that we have now, and the, and the 
proposal for us to consider from the fire department. I, I thought I've been thinking about this um, in the th in the weeks since we had the public forums, and it just it just doesn't sit right <laughs> that one municipality makes the budget and then just kind of that gets put into another municipality's budget. I just it just doesn't sit well. Um, uh, you know, you know, you know, Gabriel, can, yeah, you, can you figure, figure out where there's a, there's a place to capture that in these notes where it lives? Um, well, I, I'm not the first person to bring this up. So is there somewhere else where someone has given input about about the fire department and public works? Yeah, I don't, yeah, know. I don't even know. I, it's such a big blind spot for me. I'm not even sure why I don't have it here. I'm just going to start another category at the bottom and then I'll try to put it in after. Yeah. Yeah, um, I, think, I so, think you'll find the affinity later on when you look at it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then um, a more, um, I think one that's more dear to my heart is coming back to communication and um, information, facts, knowledge about um, the way that our services work and the way that they're funded. And it's, it's a lot for us as citizens to get our heads around. There's some of us who come and speak to you that have more knowledge than others. Um, and even then, we're, we're sometimes prone to having a misunderstanding yep. um, of information and facts. Um, the sidewalks have really stuck out to me as one of those. I think that most of us as residents, no matter where we live um, in the town, don't seem to have a really solid understanding of why it is that the town sidewalks are not being plowed and maintained in the same way that the village sidewalks are. I think I understand it, and I think that I hear a ton of people who, I, I, I wonder, don't understand it. Okay. My understanding of why town sidewalks are not being plowed with the same efficacy as village sidewalks are is because of the cost. I, I could be wrong. I don't know if Evan or Greg have any information about that, and it doesn't need to come out now, but I would suggest perhaps the select board and staff think about an item on the, on the agenda at the select board meetings during the interim period where common um, topics of conversation that they're hearing or feedback that they're getting from residents where there seems to be a lack of clear understanding across the board about something that they have clear understanding about yep. could be provided to us. Don't be afraid to repeat things. Trust me, it takes us all, I'm speaking for myself for sure, two, three, four times to really go, oh, wait, I think I get it now. So be patient with us. Give us the information a few different times. And I think having a standing um, item on the select board agenda um, about the provision of services and the way that we're taxed in the town and how that relates to um, the way that the village taxes impact the town budget um, and don't. I think in the case of the sidewalks, the village, the fact that the village does pay to plow our own sidewalks has nothing to do with the fact that the town does or does not. Um, I've never been asked to vote on a on a big plan to to plow the town sidewalks. So I I think I've heard it would cost a, a quite a large amount of money, but I don't know. Um, if you're hearing from residents they want their sidewalks plowed, then make it clear to us what it would cost for that to happen and put it to a vote or you know whatever the select board chooses. And that's just one example. So I think there are um, understandably a lot of mixed. Um, under mixed beliefs, perceptions, understandings, uh, versions about things that um, are are simply based in there are facts that could be made more clear to us as residents. And then we form our own opinions about that. You're going to have diversity of opinions, yep. but we shouldn't have diversity of facts. I think there are some things out there that all of us could use some clarity on and maybe a consistent method or opportunity for the select board and staff to address those for us, um, the more pressing ones would be um, would be helpful for us, especially in the interim period. Okay. You know, it's you know, it's always funny and when you're sitting in between conflicting parties as a mediator. You assume that everyone ha will have facts, but they're all using them in a different way, <laughs> and that's it's a really complex thing. Um, 
Gabrielle, here's what I've, I've put this in at least one place. Are there ways to build in predictable iterative opportunities that could be at an SB meeting, but it leaves the option that there could be other options too? To correct information and give information or provide a Q&A. And I think in particular, you're talking about describing the rationale, rationale behind discrepancies that people might notice and wonder about. Yeah, I think that would be really helpful for all of us. And I think it would also perhaps um, address some of the frustrations that people are experiencing um, with, the, um, with the select board meetings where I often feel like people, I, I hear people repeatedly bringing forward information and it doesn't feel like they're really being heard. I, I, I imagine they are, but it's not, there's no visible way to know that they're really listening to people who are showing up time and again, asking for information or asking for a service or offering um, to help in some way. And there doesn't seem to be, a, the loop doesn't get closed. So I like the idea of it being iterative um, and, and providing some accountability back to the community and response back to people. Sometimes the answer can be no, that's fine. We don't always all get what we ask for. Um, but to, to, to bring some closure to topics and issues that people have been bringing to the select board, um, I'm not one of those people, but I've, I've heard people coming forward and asking for things, and I feel like it's just unresolved and, and not answered. So uh, I think that iterative opportunity to um, address common topics that are being talked about in the community, um, to make sure that all of us are working from as best we can, the same pieces of information, form our own opinions as we will, but the same pieces of information. Yep. Okay. Did you have other, Did you have other thoughts? thoughts? No, no, no. Thanks, Jen. Okay. Okay. Thank you. In my mind, I'm starting, I'm preparing to start close down, close down. I don't know if there's other folks online who have not spoken yet who wish to. If so, would you raise your hand and just give me a sense of the volume? Okay. And each person in this room has had an opportunity to speak. Can I just throw out a clip? A what? Just a little clip. When I was growing up in New Jersey, every person, every household had to uh, do their own sidewalk. Oh, yeah. A little, a little clip about each person doing their own sidewalk in front of their house. And yeah, and that's how it used to work. <laughs> um, I'll stop sharing here for a moment then. Yeah, you too. You too. And my neighbors, because that's what my dad told me to do. <laughs> so let's do this. I Here's the next step from where I'm concerned with anyway. Later on this afternoon, I'll take the notes that you've seen them being developed, but it is a little bit of shorthand and a little bit messy. They're not going to change that much. You'll still see yourself reflected there, hopefully, if I've done my job well. And then that memo will go to the select board and the trustees to use for their mm -hmm. next joint meeting. Mm -hmm. It doesn't give them a lot of time to think about it, but at least it's available. When's the next joint meeting again? Monday? Monday, yeah, meeting 20, Monday night. Yep. 23rd, 630, uh, here in this room, uh, because this is the, as Aiden will fix the uh, stuff, this is the best <laughs> room that we have for virtual. Um, any closing comments, Evan, Greg? Just a quick thank you to all the citizens over the three forums who have come in person, did it virtual, sent us emails. We do the best we can. Uh, we take a lot of this information and with 21,000-ish people coming from different places in their lives and in their, in their situations, um, it's a very interesting process. Um, thanks, Jen for all of her patience and her quick on, on the fly, uh, taking people's thoughts to town TV. Uh, I know we had some technical difficulties today, but in general, we're, we're trying. And um, uh, we're gonna put it in, but for the, like the people in the room, you're not required to leave immediately, but you are gonna need to leave at some point. And I'm gonna stay here for a few minutes um, I kind of saw that some people might have had one more comment, but we'll take it offline. Take it offline. Yeah, I do want to say thank you to everyone online and in the room, but also folks who are going to be watching or paying attention to these notes going forward for your civility and your participation and your ability to hang into the conversation because 
it's not a conversation that happens once. It is definitely iterative. But it's also in the engagement that you get to learn and keep expanding and evolving ideas. So not a static process by any means. Thank you so much for being part of it. Good to go. Yeah, just uh, I'll echo the thank yous um, for everybody who participated and, and showed up. And um, thank you again and enjoy right. your weekends. Thank One you. more last thing. There are people from our staff that are not in this room that helped put these on. Thank you to several staff members for giving of your time. Uh, much appreciated. I will get back to you later. <laughs> Boy. Take care, everyone.